Thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation to speak here today. I guess everyone is watching online and I hope you have a pleasant experience. In fact, for your viewing pleasure, I've introduced various background sounds into the audio track, including my kids screaming as they play various bits of random telephone calls and the doorbell going off. Uh, also, to ensure that you stay awake during the entirety of the presentation, there will be a strange audio jump every time a slide transitions. So be sure to watch out for that. All right, so let's get started without any further ado. And I'm Manik Varma from Microsoft Research India. And the organizers requested me to give a very quick overview of the state of extreme classification before commencing with my own talk on deep XML. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the area, let me start by first defining the problem and giving some context. In traditional classification, we take an input such as an image, a document or an audio clip and classify it into a small number of categories. For example, a couple of decades ago, image classifiers could recognize hundreds of visual categories. And if we had applied them to this popular Wally image, we might have gotten back a few categories such as person, young, hand, non-photo, etc. On the other hand, extreme classification allows us to classify inputs into millions or even billions of categories. So we might want to classify this Wally image into not just a few hundred categories, but say all the words in uh, the dictionary or all the concepts on Wikipedia or the top 100 million queries currently being asked on your favorite search engine or perhaps even the subset of billions of users who might be interested in finding Wally in this image. Now, the reason that extreme classification is so exciting is because it not only lets us tackle web scale classification problems, but because it has also opened an entirely new area of research with applications in many other domains. In particular, the research community has found applications of extreme classification in areas ranging from information retrieval to recommender systems to natural language processing and even computer vision for that matter. And because of this, publications are coming out every year in diverse conferences, not just in machine learning, but also in applied areas. Lots of popular workshops have also been organized. In fact, CVPR was going to organize its first ever extreme classification workshop this year, but unfortunately that got canceled due to COVID. And if you would like to carry out research in this area, then the extreme classification repository might be a helpful place to start because it makes freely available code, data sets, metrics, benchmark results, and so on. So I look, if I look back over the last seven years, the research community has made remarkable progress. And that's because our classification accuracies have, on benchmark tasks such as tag prediction on Wikipedia have increased from 19% in 2013 to about 80% today. While our classifier model sizes have come down from terabytes to gigabytes. And in fact, even the classifier training times have come down by 10,000 X for at least pre-trained features. So in that sense, the community has made a uh, tangible significant progress. Extreme classification also seems to be thriving in industry. And that's because it's opened a new paradigm for tackling key industrial applications such as extremely large scale ranking and recommendation in web search, computational advertising, retail product recommendation, and so on. And because of this, many very nice papers have come out not only from established companies, but also from startups. Now, unfortunately, while I won't have the time to list all the individual papers by all the companies, I thought I would give a few examples of research groups that seem to be developing extreme classification themes in their uh, research. So for instance, uh, Sanjeev Kumar and Ed Chi's groups have published some very nice papers on extreme classification and applied them to YouTube video recommendation and other Google products. Similarly, Anshumali Srivastav and Inderjeet Dhillon at Amazon have developed state-of-the-art extreme classifiers and applied them to product search and recommendation problems at Amazon. In fact, Inderjeet Dhillon recently gave a keynote at PAKDD on extreme classification applied to uh, search and information retrieval. And I'd highly encourage you to go watch that uh, uh, keynote on YouTube if you're interested. At Microsoft, 
John Langford and my groups have developed a number of scalable classifiers and some of these have gone on to have significant product impact. In fact, Slice won the best paper award at Wisdom for improving the quality of re recommending related queries on the Bing search engine. Now, while the community has made a lot of progress thus far, there's still a lot that remains to be done in terms of finding new applications, developing yet more scalable and accurate classifiers, and finding better ways of dealing with tail labels. And these are particularly exciting times with deep learning algorithms starting to make their mark. So let's hope that we can make as much progress in the next seven years as we've made in the previous seven. Great, so now let's get started with deep XML which is a new framework for deep extreme multi-label learning that we've developed at IIT Delhi and at Microsoft. Now, while DeepXML is a general framework, in this talk, we will be primarily applying it to the new scenario of classifying short text documents, such as search engine queries, web page titles, retail product names, and so on. So for example, I went to Bing and asked the query citrus fruits. And so Bing can now train an extreme classifier, which will take this two word query as input and predict the relevant subset of top 100 million queries as output for the related searches application that you can see on the right. Similarly, Bing can use extreme classification to show organic search results, ads and images by appropriately defining the output or label space. So as you can see, short text applications are very important can benefit billions of people, and yet very few extreme classifiers, such as Slice or Mac, have been developed for short, ter short text extreme classification. Now, a related scenario is personalized extreme classification, where we would like to personalize the search results and recommendations based on a user's browsing and search behavior. So in this example, because I have been browsing the web pages of various citrus fruits in India, Bing could potentially personalize its query recommendations and recommend the query citrus fruits in India. Okay, so short text applications and personalized extreme classification raise a number of computational and statistical challenges. Now the main computation and scalability challenge comes from the fact that we need to personalize for billions of users who might be browsing hundreds of billions of web pages while also asking billions of queries. This means that our deep extreme classifier needs to operate at a really massive scale and classify more than 100,000 web pages every second. Now the main way of doing this while keeping operating costs low is to either use specialized hardware such as FPGAs or massively parallelize using cheap commodity hardware such as CPUs rather than expensive GPUs. Furthermore, note that all of this needs to be done within the ambit of GDPR so that personal data is protected and that users can opt out and delete their history whenever they want to, etc. In addition, in order to maintain privacy and meet our low latency requirements, our deep extreme classifier only has access to the web page title and not to its content, which makes personalization a prime example of a short text application. Now the main statistical challenge is that we need to make predictions for documents having just three to 10 words on average, and that the vast majority of these words are going to be extremely rare, occurring just once or twice in the entire training set. Both of these challenges can seem quite daunting, and a few people have expressed the concern that making predictions for queries with just two words such as citrus fruits or Wikipedia titles with just two words such as Albert Einstein is more like memorization rather than learning. Nevertheless, we cannot shy away from these challenges as, they, as these applications can benefit billions of people. And so my objectives today are twofold. First, I would like to make publicly available a suite of benchmark datasets which the entire community can use to make progress. And second, to present our first algorithm demonstrating that even very simple solutions can lead to a high impact in this area. So in order to motivate the DeepXML framework, let me highlight some of the challenges of deep extreme multi-label learning above and beyond those of short text applications. Consider a naive architecture where we have connected a feature extractor such as BERT 
to a classifier such as a fully connected output layer with 100 million labels. The first challenge is that fine tuning BERT and similar feature extractors for an extremely large number of labels is very expensive. Second, performing the forward pass or doing gradient backpropagation through a fully connected output layer with 100 million labels is simply out of the question. For example, even if it were to take just one millisecond in order to evaluate a label output, it would take more than a day to evaluate all 100 million label outputs. Thus, making predictions on even a single test point would take more than a day, while training would take months. Now, one might be tempted to solve this problem by replacing the fully connected output layer whose training and prediction costs are linear in the number of labels by a highly scalable extreme classifier such as Parable or Slice because their costs are only logarithmic in the number of labels. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't quite work. And that's because Parable and Slice and other highly scalable extreme classifiers work only for pre-trained and fixed features. They cut their costs by computing an internal representation for sublinear search by learning a tree or a graph data structure over this fixed feature representation. Now, unfortunately, in deep learning, when the feature representation is changing with every mini batch, recomputing and frequently recomputing this sublinear search data structure can be even more expensive and less accurate. DeepXML can address all of these challenges by decomposing the deep extreme classification task into four simpler subtasks or modules. In the first module, we take a feature extractor that is suitable for our application and train it quickly on a non-extreme surrogate task. The motivation is to learn an intermediate feature representation that is accurate but yet fixed so that we can train our highly scalable extreme classifiers in log time. Thus, in the second module, we can leverage parable or slice or whichever uh, extreme classifier you like and eliminate all but a logarithmic number of the hardest to classify negative labels without much loss in accuracy as it can be shown that these eliminated labels do not contribute much to learning. The motivation in this module is to reduce the problem for each training point from an extreme problem with L labels to a traditional classification problem with just order log L labels. Then in the third module, we can use transfer learning to fine tune the intermediate features and learn a final feature representation. The motivation in this module is to get all the accuracy gains due to fine tuning while still maintaining logarithmic uh, costs by ensuring that the hardest negative labels continue to remain in the label shortlist. Then in the fourth module, we can jointly train a classifier along with the final feature representation. And all of these modules can be carried out, uh, training of all of these modules can be carried out end to end in log time. Varying the choices of the various components of the uh, different components in these four modules leads to a family of algorithms with varying trade offs between scalability and accuracy. Thus, the proposed deep XML framework has three benefits. First, it allows us to compare seemingly disparate deep extreme classifiers such as XML, CNN, and MAC. Second, it allows improvements to be made to these classifiers when they are recast in the proposed framework. And third, it allows the development of new algorithms that are scalable and accurate. And in particular, we call our new algorithm for short text applications Aztec which stands for an accelerated short text extreme classifier. So let us now look in more detail at the four modules and their various components. As I just mentioned, the objective in the first module is to select a feature architecture that is suitable for the given application and to then use it to train intermediate feature Z by optimizing a non-extreme surrogate loss function. These intermediate features Z should have the following two properties in order to ensure accuracy and scalability. First, they should be accurate in the sense that 
had we optimized the uh, chosen feature architecture directly on the extreme task, then the resulting features should not lie too far away from the intermediate features. Second, in order to ensure scalability, the intermediate features should be learnt in time order nd log l on a data set with n training points, l labels and where d dimensional features are being learnt. Now the deep XML framework is very general and we could have chosen any feature architecture as part of it. So for instance, we could have chosen XML CNN's convolutional architecture or Max multilayer perceptrons or attention XML's attention or BERT, or even ResNet or DenseNet if we were dealing with images. But none of these architectures were found to be particularly suitable for low latency short text applications. Instead, what we found worked well empirically was a very simple feature architecture that was inspired by fast text. So Aztec learns d-dimensional embeddings for each of its words or tokens and then a document is represented by the TF-IDF weighted linear combination of its tokens embeddings, which are then passed through a ReLU nonlinearity. Out of vocabulary words can be handled by using character 3 grams and 4 grams and so on. So because of their low capacity, these Aztec features could be learned accurately from even the very limited training of data that is available per token in these short text applications. Similarly, because of their simplicity, these Aztec features could be computed in microseconds on a CPU and could be used to process billions of web pages per day. Now, once the feature architecture has been finalized, we need to train the features on an accurate and scalable surrogate task. For example, we could take the original L labels and cluster them into order log L meta label clusters and then train the features by predicting the meta labels for each training point rather than the original labels. This was found to work well across all our short text datasets. We were able to learn the embeddings for all the training tokens and were able to consistently achieve high feature accuracies. Furthermore, this approach based on label clustering was found to be highly scalable and Aztec features could be learnt in a few hours on a single GPU across various datasets, including those having millions of training points and uh, labels. Now, of course, DeepXML is a general framework and therefore other choices of the surrogate task based on self-supervision, label uh, subset selection or label low rank projection are also possible and might be more suitable in other applications. Now, once the intermediate features Z have been learned, they are frozen and fed into module two. So in module two, we leverage the observation that each training point has been annotated with only a logarithmic number of positive labels and that the vast majority of its negative labels can be safely ignored as they never contribute to the loss function for that point. So the objective in module two is to reduce the extreme classification task for each training point to a traditional classification task by selecting all of the positive labels for the point and also its order log L hardest to classify negative labels. This can be achieved by leveraging the negative subsampling technique based on approximate nearest neighbor search that lies at the heart of every highly scalable extreme classifier for pre-trained features. For example, you could have taken the hashing technique from Mac or the tree-based technique from Parable or the graph-based technique from Slice and applied any of these just once to the frozen intermediate feature Z and the net result would have been that if you took any single training point, then its classification problem would have been reduced from a L label problem to an order log L label problem without any great loss in accuracy. In Aztec, we use a significantly improved version of the graph based technique in Slice and this can be trained in under a couple of hours across all data sets. And as we will show in the results section, this, leads, this is significantly more accurate and scalable than just replacing the fully connected output layer with the slice classifier directly. In the third module, we use transfer learning to fine tune the intermediate feature Z and learn final features Z plus Delta Z. 
The objective in this module is to reap all the accuracy gains by fine tuning the features for the task at hand while still paying just logarithmic costs by fine tuning the features only on the shortlisted labels. This can be achieved by ensuring that the hardest negative labels to classify in the final feature space Z plus Delta Z continue to lie within the labels shortlisted in module 2. Now many techniques have been developed for transfer learning and the fine tuning of features and all of these can be used as part of DeepXML. In Aztec, we fine tune using a residual block whose spectral norm has been constrained to be no greater than unity. The residual connection has just an extra d square parameters which implies that the final features z plus delta z can be learnt accurately even from the limited training data that is available in short text applications. Furthermore, the final features can be computed in milliseconds on a CPU for low latency applications. And finally, constraining the spectral norm of the residual block ensures that the final features can't lie too far away from the intermediate features and that there is a high degree of overlap between the hardest to classify negative labels in both feature spaces. In the fourth module, we jointly train a classifier along with the final features in time order nd log l. The simplest option would have been to train one versus all classifiers on the order log l shortlisted labels per data point referred to as a one versus some classifier on this slide, but trees or other classifiers could also have been used. As part of DeepXML, there is also a wide choice of loss functions ranging from the binary cross entropy loss to the triplet or warp loss, which could be combined with various regularizers such as the L2 or the spread out regularizer. And all of this could have been optimized using SGD or Adam or whatever else works for your application. In Aztec, we train these one versus some classifiers using the binary cross entropy loss without any regularization using the sparse Adam optimizer. And again, this can be done in just a few hours on a single GPU across various short text datasets. Now in many applications, DeepXML is part of a more complex ranking pipeline where the subsequent ranking layers re-rank the output of the deep extreme classifier based on additional information such as the label features of the user metadata. Thus, as an optional component in the fourth module, we can implement a re-ranker which according to the architecture shown in this slide allows Aztec to be retrained end to end along with the token embeddings but without any extra information about users or labels. Most importantly, rather than training the re-ranker on the labels shortlisted by the second module, we train the re-ranker on Aztec's predictions which allow us to potentially eliminate any mispredictions in the original uh, Aztec classifier. This re-ranker could be trained in under a couple of hours on all datasets and led to accuracy gains of up to 1% on the publicly available datasets and more on the proprietary datasets, particularly where additional information about users and labels was available. So to conclude the technical part of the talk, DeepXML can be trained in time order nd log l by decomposing the deep extreme classification task into four simpler subtasks, each of which could themselves be trained in time order nd log l. And this allows DeepXML to generate algorithms that are significantly more scalable than state of the art deep extreme classifiers today. So let's now look at some results. We've created short text versions of the standard extreme multi-label benchmark tasks and have made them publicly available on the extreme classification repository. These include two Wikipedia datasets. The task on the wiki titles 500k dataset is to predict the subset of Wikipedia tags that might be relevant to a given article based on just its title. Similarly, the task on the wiki see also titles 350k dataset is to predict the other Wikipedia articles that might be relevant to the given article based on just its title. The datasets also include two Amazon datasets where the task is to predict the frequently bought together products given just the product title. The largest of these publicly available datasets has about 3 million labels and 1.7 million training points. 
our objective in making these data sets publicly available is to encourage the extreme classification community to carry out research on short text applications and so if you would like to share the results of your algorithm on these data sets or would like to contribute a new data set then please do contact me in addition we've also presented results on a proprietary bing ads data set for matching user queries to advertiser bid phrases the data set has more than 3 million labels and 21 million training points of course the data sets that we train on for our internal flights are somewhat larger and other methods don't scale to them which is why they've not been included in this table here so here are results on the publicly available repository data sets comparing the performance of aztec to state of the art deep extreme classifiers as can be seen on the wiki see also titles 350k dataset aztec could be 2 4 and 5% more accurate than xml cnn attention xml and mac respectively while being 7x 14x and 50x faster to train the trends are very similar on the other datasets with aztec being 3 3 and 12% more accurate on wiki titles 500k and being 5 2 and 5% more accurate on amazon titles 670k Furthermore on Amazon 3 million attention xml xml cnn and mac were unable to train on a single gpu in a day whereas aztec could train in 6 hours on a single p40 gpu Furthermore apart from aztec none of the other methods could make predictions in milliseconds on a cpu This demonstrates the utility of the deep xml framework and the suitability of the aztec architecture for low latency short text applications here are results on the bing ads dataset for matching user queries to advertiser bid phrases as with amazon titles 3 million xml cnn attention xml and mac were unable to train on this dataset in a day using a gpu whereas aztec could be trained in just 13 hours on a single gpu comparing aztec's performance to that of state of the art extreme classifiers for pre-trained features such as xreg parable and slice revealed that aztec's prediction accuracies could be up more than 20% higher than these methods this demonstrates two things first learning features for the extreme task at hand can be significantly more accurate as compared to relying on pre-trained features A side benefit of using deep extreme classification for this task is that Aztec could be used to embed the user's query as well as the advertiser's bid phrase in the same space and thereby scale to many millions of labels via zero shot learning. The second thing this demonstrates is that the sharp rise in propensity scored metrics means that aztec is doing a good job of predicting not just the popular head labels but also the rare tail labels finally when aztec was flighted for this task on bing it led to a significant improvement in the uh, metrics including an increase of 8.6% in the query coverage as well as a 2.9% increase in the match quality so as i mentioned earlier There are many different applications where Aztec can be used to personalize the results in search ads and recommendation. So here is just one such application where an user is being shown ads as they browse the web and these ads are being personalized according to the user's search and browsing history. So to take a pre-covid example from last year, a user went and browsed the web pages of P&O Cruises and then checked out the rules for baggages on cruise on cruises and then finally ended up on the msn news website so at each point of time we can use aztec to predict the subset of search engine queries that the user might have asked on bing in order to land on any of these web pages and this allows us to model the user's intent over time and once the intent has become clear one of aztec's predicted queries can be submitted to the bing ads pipeline and the corresponding ads shown to the user our objective over here is to improve the overall user experience by showing the user more relevant and thus fewer ads 
and you can see that Aztec is successful in doing this as it managed to increase the click-through rate by more than 6%. Of course, in order to do this, Aztec had to process billions of web pages in a day at a rate of more than 100,000 web pages per second, and it had to get accuracy gains over the state-of-the-art techniques currently running in production. So I hope this illustrates why deep extreme classifiers need to be not only very accurate, but also highly scalable, both in terms of their training and prediction times. Continuing on, in order to demonstrate that DeepXML is a general framework, we applied it to the task of predicting a product's Amazon category from just its image. This required only minimal changes to the architecture where we simply replaced Aztec's short text feature extractor by ResNet 18 and everything else remained more or less the same. As you can see, despite this very simple change, DeepXML's prediction accuracy was 10% higher than Parable, Dismec and Slice on the pre-trained features generated by the very same ResNet 18 model. Finally, DeepXML can be used to analyze XML, CNN, and MAC and yield improved versions of these classifiers. For instance, if we were to replace Aztec's short text feature extractor by the convolutional features of XML, CNN, then we get an accuracy gain of 1.8% and a training speed up of 10 times over the original XML, CNN classifier, though these results are still not as good as Aztec's. The accuracy gain comes from the fact that we are fine-tuning features through the additional residual block, whereas the speedup happens because we are replacing XML CNN's one versus all classifiers by DeepXML's one versus some classifiers that are trained on only order log L labels per data point without any accuracy loss. Similarly, if Mac's multi-layer perceptron features were used in DeepXML, we get an accuracy gain of 2.4%, whereas training could be speeded up by almost 40 times over the original MAC classifier. Though again, these results are not as good as Aztecs. The accuracy gains come because MAC stop train, stops training just after the first module. So just after training on the surrogate loss function, which for it is defined through label low rank projections. So it doesn't have any of the remaining modules and cannot get any of the accuracy gains due to feature fine tuning or learning classifiers and so on. The training speed up also happens for the very same reason. So because Mac stops training after uh, just the first module, it needs to learn a large ensemble of classifiers to get good accuracy. Whereas DeepXML can get good accuracies with just a single learner, the results could have been improved even further with an ensemble. Okay, now I'm almost out of time, so I won't be able to present more results and ablations, but the high level message that DeepXML is a general framework, it's very flexible and extensible, and with minor changes in the components of the four modules, it can lead to good results in multiple applications and domains. So to conclude, I have three take home messages for you. The first one is that short text applications are very important and I hope we can work on them together as a community because they provide new research challenges and can benefit billions of people across the world. The second is that DeepXML is a general framework for deep extreme multi-label learning which can generate highly accurate algorithms that can be trained in time order ND log L and that this can be significantly more scalable than the existing state-of-the-art deep extreme classifiers. Finally, Aztec is one such algorithm that is particularly well suited for short text applications. It can be used to make personalized predictions for billions of users and it can process billions of events in a day and Aztec can be can lead to significant improvements in both offline and online metrics. So we hope to be able to provide the code for Aztec to you soon and make it available on the public on the extreme classification repository. Thank you very much.